Well, within the last month, we learned that the makers of Ozempic and Manjaro are both trying out GLP-1 shots on kids with obesity. The pharmaceutical giants reached popularity over the last year. You may already know when their injectable medications traditionally used for diabetes were being used as weight loss aids. So joining me now this morning is Dr. Jessica Moore, a primary care physician at Eating Recovery Center Houston and the Woodlands to talk about why parents should kind of, yes, take this in stride but really uh, understand the warnings with this first of all doctor thank you for being yes, here absolutely thank you for having me okay so Eli Lilly is mm -hmm. the company behind Manjaro yes. they are testing this now on kids as young as six years old tell yes. us about that yes so there's actually um, they're starting a drug trial with this medication too and it's an injectable so I mean I think parents need to understand that they are signing up for their child to have an injectable shot some of them are weekly some of them are daily um, to promote weight loss in their kids okay is this to test if it's harmful, to see if it's got some benefits to help them Correct. with their with their weight loss. So we know in adults that it can cause weight loss. And so now they're translating that into children um, to see if it will also help. We know it can help with weight loss in them, but there are almost no long-term studies on the efficacy of how this drug is gonna really work, especially in developing and growing kids. We don't want to harm them. And so there, these are very small trials right now going on to look at the effect of these weight loss drugs on kids. Okay, so what are some harmful effects that it's already had on adults that, I it's, I feel like it's such a short time, right, within the last year or so right, that right. just adults are learning uh, what it can do. So what are some of those effects? So the way that these drugs work is they, um, they, they bind and they act as a normal hormone in the body on insulin. And so it causes the body in, in diabetes to better regulate their diabetes. And then the added, because it's a hormone effect, is that it decreases the appetite. Um, but they also work on the emptying of the stomach. And so a lot of the side effects that we're seeing in these drugs is really from um, GI issues. And so the biggest one is it can cause delayed gastric emptying, uh, meaning that the stomach is no longer emptying as quickly as it will. And that causes a lot of you know, fullness, nausea, it can cause vomiting. Mm -hmm. um, there's been case reports and reports of you know severe paralysis of the stomach where they're not emptying their stomach at all. Yeah. Um, and the, the kind of consequence of that is that someone's gonna be eating less and it causes weight loss, but there are a lot of stomach issues and that's one of the reasons that people stop taking these medications. Why would you say, um, what is the biggest benefit? Obviously it's the weight loss, but I mean, is it the cost benefit analysis here is that if the kids are gonna be this sick, maybe with the, with right. the side effects, I mean, is it worth it? Well, and I think you also have to balance, you know, we know that the that obesity long term can cause you know higher blood pressure, type two diabetes, um, but those are in and of itself things that you can treat. The the living in a larger body, there are so many kind of pieces of that that um, we really have to take an effect on and think about it from like a whole body health. The health is health is not just a weight. It's mm -hmm. you know emotional, mental, it's you know, environmental, it's societal. And so as, especially as pediatricians are considering this for their patients, they really need to think about what are gonna be the long-term effects of this. And these are not medications that are temporary. When kids get off of them, well, we know in adults, when they get off of them, they gain the weight back. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen that in some of those very small, even trials in adolescents, that they've gained the weight back. So it's not causing a long-term benefit. They're not getting the tools that they need to learn how to nourish their body appropriate, learn how to do, you know, joyful movement. This is a, you know, they can have some weight loss here, but then we don't know long-term what it's gonna do for them when they get off of it. Is it gonna affect their growth and development? And so those are all kind of pieces of the picture and puzzle that, you know, need to be really taken seriously. What are some healthy habits that, you know, parents can, that you can tell parents right now if they're kind of considering this, maybe, maybe go another route at this point or take your sure, time? Sure, sure. I mean, there's, it's so young in this and we have just zero really almost evidence of how this is going to really affect kids long term. But the other thing is that we do have lots of things we can talk about with, um, with our kids, not just, you know, and not even using the word weight. Let's talk about, you know, what kinds of things can we incorporate into how we nourish our bodies? What can we do as a family? Can we eat together as a family? You know, can we go do movement together as a family? And then even, you know, I think a bigger piece of this picture is societally, how do we address, you know, 
is it safe to go out and play outside? Like, do we have access to those foods? And those are other issues that also I think need to be addressed besides just what is this one thing that we're treating, which is the weight. Yeah. All right, doctor. Thank you so much you. for joining Thanks us for and, and letting parents who are watching kind of understand what they would be facing. Thank you Thank so you. much.